Success at the regional level qualifies a Shawnee Mission Middle School for world competition. A four-day business boot camp teaches high school students the art of entrepreneurship. We'll check out a club where elementary students not only learn about the environment, they also work to preserve it. And the shadow discovers a connection between two of the district's award-winning high school journalism programs. It's all next on this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Welcome to Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. I'm your host, Leanne Neal. Legos are serious business for a team of students from Trail Ridge Middle School. A win at the regional robotics competition means they've earned a spot at the first Lego League World Festival. Beautiful. While it may look like these students are simply playing with Legos, there's something much bigger going on here. Perfect. Thanks to a lot of hard work and creativity, these students are members of one of the top middle school robotics teams in the country. One of the huge components in uh, our robotics competition is the technical aspect and just learning gear ratios and rack and pinion steering. That one trip back to base to change that attachment could cost you some major points. Perfect, you got it. With only two and a half minutes to complete as many tasks as possible, the students have a lot riding on the robot. Right here is what we have our mat, and this is what we run our programmed robot on um, to do certain tasks. And we call the tasks um, our missions. Here's first Lego League theme is climate connections, and each Black Magic team member has an important oh, role to play. So My favorite part's building. Building's like, what gets it done. You can't just build, do the programs and make, try to make it work because you don't have anything built to make it work. One of our teammates named Cody, he's an amazing builder. Christopher, he's one of the guys who brings it all together. Anna, she is just such a great person. She got all of our um, project together, our, what we had to say for um, our technical judging. And I try to keep everybody on track and I'm pretty good with programming. All of the first LEGO League teams start out with the same kit and software, but it is up to each team to design its own robot, including all the attachments, plus use the software provided to program exactly what the robot does. A lot of hours, a lot of outside work, and they must be highly motivated to accomplish this. They're representing the region at the national competition in Atlanta. So we're very, very proud of them. When we first started, I really thought it was about robotics. I think that's what most people kind of assume. It's robotics and it's about gear ratios and, and um, you know, the actual building and such. And that's a big compo component of it. But um, the engineering principles these kids are learning, the, the project skills and learning to, um, to take something and go through a step process and come out the end with this solution is just incredible. At the competition, it isn't always about the points. They've got awards for team spirit and stuff, and I know that we're pretty enthusiastic about <gasps> going to this. It's learning, and there are many different forms uh, of learning, many different ways you can learn, and here they are taking their previous knowledge and creating new, new knowledge. It is phenomenal just watching them work. First LEGO League is for students aged 9 to 14, so this is the last year Black Magic is eligible. Next year, if team members are interested, they can move on to the high school first robotics competitions. Up next, a competition that's giving high school students the business. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Erin. And I'm Hannah. And, and we're, we're sixth graders, graders from Bonjour Elementary. And we read the book, The Mailbox. By Audrey Schaefer. This is a mystery about a sixth grader named Gabe who finds his uncle dead after the second day of school. After his uncle's death, he discovers a mysterious note in his mailbox which leads to a big mystery. He discovers he is in a sticky situation. Who is the mystery note writer and what is their connection to Gabe? 
We rate this book 4 out of 5 stars because of the compassion Gabe shows for his uncle. Read Mailbox to find out who is writing Gabe the Mysterious Letters. Welcome back. Imagine going from a business novice to an entrepreneur with a business plan in hand in just four days? Shawnee Mission's Indian Creek Technology Center was happy to host high school students from across the metro for KC BizFest 2009. Kansas City BizFest is really, it's a four day business boot camp. And what we do is we bring in students from around the entire metro and in those four days, they learn what it takes to open and run a business. It turns out that it's a mini business plan camp. And as you know, many of our youth, ethnicity has, and gender have nothing to do with it. This is about dreams and turning dreams into reality. This year is our biggest BizFest ever. We have 82 students this year. We started off uh, BizFest about six years ago with 25 to 30 students. This year has grown the most. It went from 52 students to 82 students. The students this year are more engaged. These students have actually asked the past students actually what went on in the classes, so they were more prepared. A lot of them already came prepared with their business plans and knew what they were gonna talk about. These students seem to be asking more questions of the speakers. Uh, they seem to be more in tune with what's going on in the community. I think we're all learning the basic stuff, and I think it's, it gives us a sense of, of, of what real professionalism looks like and what the elements that it includes and what we're supposed to be like. It gives us a, like a view of what's out there for us, to, to the opportunities and the doors we can open. We are teaching basic fundamental skills in finance, marketing, how to make a presentation, how to sell your ideas, how to sell yourself, uh, job interviews. They're really going to come out with a lot more self-confidence and knowing that, you know what, they, the student can make change and that, that they bring value uh, to Kansas City. I have a, a tough time sometimes also like talking with uh, professionals or trying to, you know, really um, talk and make a good impression. And so this is helping me out. This is giving me some um, experience in, you know, talking with other people in the workforce. In my experience, I have um, had the opportunity of meeting um, young um, students from all over the country. And the first thing I noticed um, from the moment that I uh, was able to address this group of students was the commitment that they already had from the first moment we started um, interacting. And I think that uh, speaks a lot to the community um, and the use that you have here in Kansas City. Since the beginning, I knew that it was a great experience and I knew that we were going to receive help from other people, from professionals, and we were going to get to kind of see what the business um, life is all about. But I didn't expect people to be able to really actually touch, you know, you because like our last speaker, Mr. Block, he has a, a passion for what he does. It's telling us, you know, don't do it just, you know, for, for, the, for the money, but, you know, do it because it's something that you care about. The best part are the speakers that come in. And hearing their stories of success and the, the way they did it and, and really just feeding off their motivation. We have about 76 mentors this year, and we get those uh, from, we have a mentor committee. And the mentor committee, we uh, reach out to all of the corporations, all the small businesses that deal with the Hispanic Chamber, and we ask them to send mentors to help us here. And some of the people who came last year and mentored told some other people that they came, not even from any corporations that are involved with the Hispanic Chamber. And so that word of mouth just keeps going and more and more of the community keeps getting involved. I mentor as well. I actually think the mentors, we get more out of it, so I think, than the students. One of my passions is just to see the kids grow, helping them understand that their dreams can come true, and that's one of the eye-openers that BizFest does for our Hispanic students as well as other students. I'd like to see it continue to grow. I think it's great. Uh, you know, it's been geared specifically towards Hispanic kids. While it's not limited to Hispanic students, it's been focused there. It would be nice to see that, that grow. 
Uh, I hope the word continues to get out that it's not limited to Hispanic students and we start seeing all kinds of students coming in. I think we're just going to keep growing. I hope next year we have 100 students and the year after 150 students. Um, and I, the more the community is getting involved, more the community, once they do it, they're hooked, they want to come back. Uh, we even have people who call us at the last minute and say, I know I wasn't going to make it, but now I, I can be there. Mm -hmm. And the people who are here for one day this year are saying we want to be there for all four days next year. Parents and the kids who attend BizFest tell us that it, it was changing, it really changed their lives. They see life in a different way, uh, they become more responsible, they become more focused on their studies, more focused on extracurricular activities, whether it's work, uh, sports, or whatever they're involved in, or you actually get them involved in things before they weren't involved. All of them are winners um, because they're going to learn basic life skills on how to be successful. Whether they decide to open up their own business or whether the student decides to work for corporate America or for a not-for-profit. It is the only program that I know that in four days you can see a significant change. Many of the programs that many of the foundations contribute to take maybe a year, two years, or however long before you can see what the measurable success or results are. This one you see in four days. There is no question about it. In the end, Shawnee Mission was well represented among the 2009 KC BizFest winners. Students from Shawnee Mission West, Shawnee Mission East, Shawnee Mission North, and Shawnee Mission Northwest all took home awards. Congratulations to everyone who took part. Some after-school clubs focus on athletics, others on academics. Up next, we'll visit a club where the sponsor's main goal is to get students digging in the dirt. I'm Grant with Kids Science News Network. Are you an explorer? Can you see yourself living and working in space? NASA has big plans, starting with using the space shuttle to complete the International Space Station. Then, new spacecraft will fly people back to the moon. And from the moon, Mars will be studied. Someday people will live and work on Mars. To learn more about how you can help turn this vision into a reality, visit our website. Until next time, I'm Grant with Kids Science News Network. in the environmental club at Sunflower Elementary, renew, reuse, and recycle aren't just words, they're actions. We're just going to build a terrarium that we can take home and the goal is going to be then to watch this plant live, not to kill it. That's the trick. With a little humor and a lot of patience, Georgia Smith is on a mission to get fifth and sixth graders at Sunflower Elementary excited about the environment. Protecting what we've got, enjoying what we've got, and maintaining it so that it'll be there for the future. And just to appreciate it. To, uh, it is amazing to take the children out and let them feel the leaves, and they don't realize that they have a smell or uh, the textures. They love all these little things, you know. On this day, members of Sunflower's Environmental Club are turning trash into treasure by recycling old plastic bottles into terrariums. We started off by putting larger rocks and then um, then, we start, then we had to put some smaller rocks. Then we uh, added our soil and put the plants in and then we added the water and we're gonna, and we're gonna watch our plants to see how they were grown in a controlled environment. Here's a score of mine. That's like a greenhouse. In addition to this inside project, the students maintain a group of gardens around the school grounds, as well as a host of other earth-friendly endeavors. We went out and planted the bulbs that should start blooming here, and we recycled. We made recycling boxes, and we pick up everyone's recycling boxes around the school. I don't know if you've noticed the bulbs are coming up. Do you remember where you planted them? Yeah. This is one of the things. I, you might look on your way home tonight. Don't walk on those things. Well, we're going to check on the bulbs to see how they're doing. We do this like every week or so, every time we meet. So if we do that th and they get full grown, we'll have our garden back. Well, number one, I hope they have an appreciation for the outdoors. And it's my goal to get the children out digging in the dirt. We put out bird feeders by using, using peanut butter, and pine cones with bird seeds. My favorite thing is that we get to uh, actually a chance to save the environment and do things like plant stuff 
and recycle. This is the first time we've ever attempted to do this. And I think you did a phenomenal job. And I, I applaud all of you. You did a nice job. The journalism programs at Shawnee Mission East and Shawnee Mission North both win a lot of regional and national awards. And the shadow knows there's something else they have in common. Find out about this unusual connection when Spotlight on Shawnee Mission returns. Hi, my name is Calista Bowling and I'm a sixth grader at Ryan Benninghoven Elementary School. The book I read is called Gossamer by Lois Lowry. This book is about a young dream giver named the Little Swan. What is a dream giver, you ask? It is a being that bestows dreams to you when you are sleeping. Little Swan and her teacher, Finn Elderly, bestow dreams to a young boy named John, a woman, and a dog named Toby. Then trouble strikes. Little Swan and Thin Elderly must face a horde. A horde are the beings that give you nightmares. Will Little Swan and Thin Elderly overcome the horde or perish at its feet? Read this book to find out. I give this book four out of five stars because it was filled with mystery and excitement. Welcome back. Some of the best student journalists in the country can be found working in Shawnee Missions High Schools. From newspaper to yearbook, students and advisors put in countless hours documenting their high school's history. Today, The Shadow takes us inside two of these outstanding programs. Our first stop, Shawnee Mission East. So they're actually about a day away from the deadline. Dow Tate likes to challenge his journalism students at Shawnee Mission East, and it's paying off with plenty of regional and national recognition. Explain for us the time, I guess the timeline that you all work on for each edition. How often do you publish? I publish every two weeks. And, um, and so, kind of it's a non-stop thing. I mean, just, just today, as a matter of fact, they handed out their story idealist for the next issue. And even though they haven't finalized this issue, they're already, those kids have already picked up story ideas for the next one. So they're already in full motion as far as you know, every, the next issue, even though they haven't quite finished this one. Shawnee Mission East is one of only three schools in the country to have both its newspaper and its yearbook selected as Crown Awards finalists. The yearbook is also a pacemaker finalist, and 14 journalists will be competing at the state journalism competition. I thought this was pretty good packaging as far as the Nichols trip thing goes. His key to success? Letting the journalists do their job. I play a little bit of a rover. I kind of see where there are issues and where there's needed and keeping kind of constant communication with editors. And then also there's a big critique process at the end where we're kind of constantly stressing our expectations. But well, I'll tell you what, once you can kind of get it set up where um, you've got a good structure like that and kids feel connected, they feel a part, they feel involved, they feel responsible, uh, they really run with it. I mean, they really do. And you set those expectations, and it's really amazing to watch. People are on their final pages right now, um, kind of getting all their photos. They got shot um, at the beginning of the week and last week. And it really is a pretty quick turnover. So basically what they're doing is just trying to put it all together now so we aren't, you know, scrambling on deadline night, especially with a bigger issue like we're doing this issue. Tell me how many pages in a typical issue and then explain what a bigger issue would be. What we typically do um, in the past is between 24 and 28 pages, but a bigger issue now is 32 pages. So that's what we're that's what we're looking at right now, which is um, a little bit more work, but it's something cool that they can flip through, and I think that extra content goes a long way. So basically, I'm just going in right now, and it's the day before deadline, and uh, just kind of refitting everything to see how it's going to end up looking. I'm anxious for you to tell us about technology, um, moving the publication online. How, how have those changes impacted um, high school journalism? Mm, wow, you have to. I, I still believe the basics are the basics, that, that I'm teaching kids here that can go off into, uh, not just into publications, but they can apply interviewing skills, questioning skills, all that into a lot of fields. So I just feel like that's going to be something they can apply. Uh, but the technology is very much pushing us all the time. I mean, you're just constantly having to keep up, whether it's a new computer program, uh, new digital photography trends, or whatever. And so we really pride ourselves on trying to get kids that can walk out of here and walk into college programs or into professional publications, for all that matter, and, and be able to use the technology that's out there. Staff members also have a say in what stories they cover. You're not assigned to a specific section. You'll never always write for sports and you'll never always be doing 
you know, news stories. Um, you can really pick what what interests you and what you want to kind of pursue, which I always thought was a really a really good way to do the system, especially in high school when people are, you know, just starting to learn what they want to do. Now, did you start as a freshman in a like a journalism one class? Yeah, took J one my uh, first semester, joined paper second semester, and been on it ever since. Did you know at that point that you were going to aspire to? To the role of editor. Oh no, I uh, <laughs> I did staff writer, and then the next year reapplied for staff writer. I like doing this too because I get to read other people's stuff and help them make it as good as they can. The journalism one class. Then, as they proceed up, does each uh, newspaper and yearbook do, is each one of those a class during the day? They, that's right. Okay, and then they put in time. I'm guessing outside of the school day, of course, too. That's correct. Tons. <laughs> okay, and Tons. students motivate themselves on their own to put that time in usually. Um, usually, basically, they'll work here until they get hungry, and if you feed them, they're going to work here even later. Kind of an amazing problem to have, really. It is really nice. <laughs> I mean, it is really nice when you're like, okay, go home. Yeah, okay. I want to go home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How much time do you think within a week do you spend on the paper? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I'm in both newspaper hours, so that's three hours every other day. I'm generally here after school for at least an hour. Is that hard sometimes to balance with your schoolwork? I mean, how do you do that? I've always just kind of I thought that school comes first, but this is something that's very important as well. So it's hard to find a balance, but usually I think, okay, I'll do an hour of math homework and then an hour of journalism. And just making sure that one doesn't trump the other too much. It's the process that matters sometimes a lot more than the end push, okay? And I think we forgot that a little bit this time. And by the way, that's a great headline. I don't know if you've, that's a great headline. I tell you what, I, that's, that's a killer headline. I, I, they, don't, they don't get a whole lot better than that, so that's cool. What's the most rewarding part about being a part of the newspaper? Mondays, when we come out, it's probably the uh, best part of the whole process. I think that's, that's half the reason, you know, we even do it is because we get to, you know, publish it, put it out, and, you know, that's On Mondays, everybody's going to gonna see a harbinger, which is, I think, really neat. In addition to distributing the newspaper to Shawnee Mission East students and staff, the Harbinger regularly exchanges editions with a number of other high schools around the country, including Shawnee Mission North, where Dow's wife Becky is the journalism teacher. I'm wondering, is one of the schools that you exchange with perhaps uh, Shawnee Mission North? Tell us about your connection there. Well, I'm guessing that's an interesting in-house rivalry. <laughs> uh -huh. It can be. <laughs> that's neat. Well, I guess we would push each of each of your programs to uh, be at their best game. Yeah, exactly. She, they uh, sent me a, um, uh, a note yesterday which had a picture of some of my kids sitting uh, while they were shooting a game. And, and their note to us was, why North's photography is better? <laughs> And so I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, but hey, but that's great motivation for us. Sure. We'll, we'll go back and, and try a little harder. At Shawnee Mission North, Becky Tate's journalism students know what it's like to win. The yearbook is both a national pacemaker and Crown Award finalist. The National Scholastic Press Association Picture of the Year was snapped by a Shawnee Mission North senior. And with 19 regional winners, the school had the most journalists qualify for state. But all these honors don't come without a lot of hard work, as we found when we stopped by after hours one Wednesday. Instead of giving me a real generic lead, give me a real lead. Like give me, like actually go down and watch it, watch practice right now. And like give me, like really, give me names. I saw you working with the student on his lead in. Mm -hmm. Is that a challenge that you faced with? You know, I think after doing it for 20 years, no, because it's, it's just part of the day. You know, they, they come in and the writing, they tend to want to write real rah-rah and cheery and everything's perfect. You can tell me all the great parts of it too, but go on and tell me there's got to be a couple of tough moments, you know. I think the important thing is when a reader picks up a yearbook 20 years from now, it'll be a good historical aspect because that's the one thing I find with yearbooks, especially at North with its old tradition, is I get people calling me. I can't tell you how many times a year I get people calling me wanting yearbooks or wanting me to look up a fact. What's in there I hope is accurate, you know. And that's what I work with these kids, too, to go, remember, what you're writing will be the God's honest truth in 20 years because someone will go, oh, in the yearbook it said, so you, you better make sure you get it right. Each year, the Indian staff selects a theme for its yearbook, but this year, that's proven to be a bit of a stumbling block so far. The theme is hard because it really, you have to just brainstorm how you're going to tie the whole building together and how it's going to fit with the school year 
and ideally it's it's created at the beginning of the year when you don't really know how the year's going to go, so you have to do a little bit of prognosticating, which is tricky at best. And when does it have to be out the door in order to get it back in time? Five minutes ago. The final deadline for all the pages except for the spring sports is Tuesday. It's right now, right this minute as we speak. Are you on your timeline? Uh, we're a little bit behind, but I think it shouldn't be too bad to make it up. As long as we get it out on time, that's all that matters. How did you end up as the editor of Shawnee Mission North's yearbook? How did that come about? Uh, well, my sister actually did yearbook, and uh, her book did really well, and she ended up being editor-in-chief. So I kind of got drafted through it, and then I got to the point where I was like, you know, I've already designed, and this is the next, next step, and I thought I could do a really good job with it, and I think I've been doing all right. Well, and North has such a tradition of people that come back to have their children go through. Do you, you have do. You five have generations, too? Um, Kevin's a good example. His, he's third generation, Shawnee Mission North student. So, you know, he's one of those generational families who's come to North. So that's really nice. And I graduated in 83 from North, and it's real fun. I've had kids over the years who so I'm like, ooh, you know, I went to high school with your mom. She was on your book staff with me, too. You know, and, and you're here working on staff. It's really, it, it really is a very small world. Where do you get your ideas, or where does the staff get their inspiration? Uh, just looking through other people's work, other yearbooks, uh, magazines, big help for just little graphic things, and a lot of it comes from the fact that our pictures are so good. I mean, not many other schools have as good of photography as us. Quite a blessing, actually. Eric Zeller enjoys taking pictures for the yearbook, but says in the digital age, that's just part of the process. One, we learn how to use our cameras and all of, about aperture and white balance and shutter speed and ISO. And then we have to learn a whole new thing about Photoshop and like what it does and how it can help us. And then we come in every Wednesday and pretty much every Saturday till like 8.30 or 9 and just work until it gets finished. Tell us about the newspaper. How often do you publish? Um, the paper comes out about once a month. and. Um, it's a news magazine, so it's, it's not like Dow's Paper at East. It's very different. Students tell stories about their peers or about what's going on in the building, um, localized national issues like the economy, which has been interesting to see high school kids look at what's going on with the economy and how it affects them at home and how it affects people around them. And how did you come up with the feature story, the cover story for the paper? How, how, tell us how... Um, well, I'm a vegetarian, so people might think that it was my idea, but it was actually uh, one of our staff members, Nathaniel Zotchke. And um, it was a little controversial at first, but eventually as people thought about it, they kind of warmed up to the idea of doing vegetarian food. Tell me kind of what your thought process is or your approach to, to helping the students really um, rise to the occasion and, and create the best publications that they can. A lot of it is, is, is I end up with just incredibly good kids. I mean, that's, that's part of it. I get great kids that work super hard and don't want to let anybody down. They want to keep it as strong as it was. But I think it's really nice that we take kids to workshops, we take kids to camp in the summer, um, and they get to see other publications around the country. So they don't just see the other shiny missions, which is if there was a place to be, this would be an okay spot because there's good competition here between um, all the five high schools. There's, there's real strong publications. So that's nice. And the greatest joy? The greatest joy is when something goes really well. Something, a kid figures something out or they bring you something that they've worked on forever and it's finally all morphed together. That's probably the biggest joy. I'd like to thank Becky and Dow Tate and all of their journalism students at Shawnee Mission North and Shawnee Mission East. Keep up the outstanding work. That's all the time we have for this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Join us again as we continue to feature the programs and people of Shawnee Mission who are helping guide students to success. Thank you for watching.